So let's go through this in a bit more detail just so that you get used to dealing with these potential curves. Let's imagine we had, we launched the space trough with enough rocket fuel to have this much energy. So what's it going to do? Well, as we kind of saw with some of the roller coaster examples earlier in this course, if we don't have enough to get over this hump, we're not going to get to this point. We're going to be stuck at this level forever. That's right. Well, we could go up to here and then fall straight back down again. Not very useful if you want to get over here. Fine. Because if we get to this level, the potential energy is equal to our total energy, so you're not going to be moving. So That's you're just right. gonna, it's like throwing a ball up. That would be the top of its arc, and then it would come back down again. You could go to a lower level, because then you've got, say, this much potential energy and still a little bit of kinetic energy. And so we, that, that you could use that to go sideways and stay in an orbit. That's right. So once you get up here, we still need energy to put us in orbit, as we talked about. Again, it doesn't come from nowhere. So you can't use all of your energy going up, otherwise... You just come back down. And in fact, for a low Earth orbit, the amount of energy, kinetic energy you need to stay in orbit is many times more than the potential energy. So it's actually low. It would be you need an energy like that to stay in orbit down here because you need so much sideways velocity to keep yourself there. So that's great if you want to stay around the Earth, but what if you want to get to the moon? Yeah, I mean, basically, this is a region, a permitted region. In principle, you get to the moon, again, if someone did a quantum wormhole or tunnel <laughs> or something like that. But you have to get over that energy lip. Um, to get to the moon, you need to give it this much energy. So you give it that little bit more energy. Now it can go up here and just trickle through this point and then fall down. Now, this is the interesting point. So if this is our total potential energy, now we only need this much to get off the moon's surface. What about coming back? Yes, yeah, so for the, for getting from the moon to the Earth, you only need that much energy, so much less, which is why our moon launch is much less dramatic. It is also a problem of getting rid of the energy because right. you have to get over the lap, then you have to somehow get rid of energy because if you just, just fell, by the time you reach the moon's surface, you'll be going pretty fast. You have this much kinetic energy, which is not a controlled landing. It's more like wham! <laughs> it's what we call the hard landing. <laughs> so you're actually going to need to have some fuel for retro rockets. Um, going the other way around, it's much worse because you need to slow down an awful lot to land gently on the surface of the Earth rather than plow in like a shooting star. Now, luckily, at least on the Earth, we have other things that we can use to change from this potential energy, as you said. There, now there actually is air and there is friction to help us slow us down, which we didn't have on the moon. Yes, yeah, so in fact, it's of probably, I mean, it's very difficult to land on the Earth because you've got to get rid of a lot of energy. Right. This is an enormous amount. And so you have to have uh, re-entry plans and not skip off the atmosphere and all the special heat-resistant tiles, whatever it is, to slow yourself down. So, so that's exactly why we see those flames shooting off these capsules, because there's so much energy being converted to other forms. Whereas for the moon, there's much less energy, but you can't use the atmosphere, so you actually have to carry fuel to do that. If you give it this much energy, now it can go anywhere. So once we get to this point, we can choose to go to the moon if we want, but we can go further off into space, let's say. But could we just keep cruising? We could. Uh, however, um, so this is the Earth-Moon system uh -huh. to scale. And so if you give it this much energy, you can escape anywhere. But let's factor in the sun. Now let's look at the whole inner solar system. So, this is wow. the sun. What's that? That's Jupiter. <laughs> so the Earth isn't even on this anymore. The Earth is thinner than the thickness of this line here. <laughs> so you see that I mean, the sun weighs a lot more yes, than the rest of the system put together by a huge factor. So um, let's, however, zoom in on the yep. top little bit here because you really can't see anything here. So we have our huge sun potential energy well here. Uh, that's Jupiter. Jupiter again there. And now we can, that's Mars, that's Earth and the Moon, and that's Venus. Mercury's down here as well, but we can't see it. It's yep. so small. So now you're seeing that um, once you get out of the Earth and the Moon's gravitational potential, you're still completely dominated by the Sun. Mm. You could orbit around at this point, but to go to Mars or Jupiter... We need still a lot more energy to get us to there. And let's zoom in on the Earth and the Moon. You can now maybe, if you look really hard, see a little bump on the side that's the Moon here. Yeah, just barely. And that's Mars up there. But there's still a good chunk of a difference to get from here to get to Mars. So once you've got this much energy, you've escaped from the Earth-Moon system. And that would mean you could wander around at that distance from the Sun quite naturally. But going to a different distance from the Sun, there's a lot more energy you're going to need. So it just doesn't stop here. The further or far away we go, we still need that energy to get there. That's right.